Hi everyone, this is Gabe from Brick, uh, and today I'm going to be showing you how to go from a uh, flat list of point labels that you might get of a, uh, an export from your BMS uh, and transform that into a Brick model. Uh, and the way we're going to be doing that is by using a couple open source tools. Uh, the first one is called OpenRefine. This is a, a self-hosted Java application uh, with a nice little interface in your browser that's been out for a while. And it's essentially this sort of cross between Python's uh, Pandas library and Excel that uh, is designed for working with messy data. It gives you a lot of nice utilities. Um, highly recommend going to openrefine.org, uh, checking out some of the videos they have so you can get a feel for what the software is capable of. Uh, we're going to be using a couple of sort of the basic features today. The other open source tool we're going to be using is Brick Builder, which is a tool that I've written. Uh, still pretty rough around the edges, but it gets the job done. Uh, and what that's going to do is take a CSV file, uh, and it's going to take each row of that CSV file, and it's going to turn that into a set of Brick triples. And together, uh, applying this to the entire CSV file is going to create essentially a Brick model for our building. So I'll walk through what, uh, how that works so that you can be familiar with that. And so what I've done is I've started up OpenRefine on my computer. Um, none of this data is going to be leaving my computer. This is something that you can do uh, without having to trust any of your data to some web service. Uh, and what I'm going to do is use uh, uh, this import function. Uh, I've got a CSV file of some uh, uh, building point labels that I've exported. This link will be in the description so you can uh, observe the same example that we're going to be going through today going to import this. Uh, and then I'm just going to uncheck this box down at the bottom uh, because we don't have a header. I'm going to rename the project example and then import. Okay, so looking at these point labels, essentially what we're going to do is try to split these up into different fields and then classify those fields according to different brick types and then export that to the tool. So Looking at these, we can see that we've got some periods as sort of the delimiters um, for most of these. And so it's probably a good idea uh, to start ahead by, by splitting that up uh, based on the period. So uh, we're going to go to Edit Column, split into several columns. We're going to use the period character as the delimiter. Uh, I'm going to split into most three columns just to sort of be conservative and take a look at that structure. Uh, and I want to keep that original column around. Okay, so we can see that that has, uh, go ahead and split those up. I'm going to rename this first column point label. All right, and now I can see that, you know, this first column seems like it's a bunch of AHU. The second one seems like a lot of it is uh, HU identifiers. Uh, and so if I want to get a sense of what the distribution of those labels are, a really helpful tool is to look at facets. And a facet We'll do a text facet because this is text data. What a facet does is essentially gives it gives us a, a histogram of the counts of unique values within that column. So sorting by count is a really great way of, of getting those sort of the most common uh, values in that column. And we can see that zone is the most common by, by about an order of magnitude. So we can click on zone and that'll filter out our view for uh, uh, only the rows that have zone in that column. And now we can see what we're probably looking at is a bunch of VAV uh, points. So uh, zone is going to be uh, sort of our indicator of that. This next column is going to be the error handling unit identifier. Uh, and this last column has a mix of sort of what's probably the zone or the room name and then the name of the actual point of the VAV. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this column to uh, upstream HU. Uh, and what I'm going to do on this last column is I'm going to split that up. Uh, it looks like in some cases we've got a period as a delimiter, and in some cases we've got a colon as a delimiter. Uh, so what we can do is go to Edit Column, Split into several columns, uh, and we're going to split using a regular expression, where that regular expression is either the period character or the colon character. And we can go ahead and remove that column because we just want to split that up. All right, so we can see now we're getting sort of pretty reliably. Um, we can just take a look at a facet temporarily. See, we're pretty reliably. We're getting things that look like rooms, uh, which looks pretty nice. Um, for this column, we're getting things that look like 
point labels, a lot of sort of classic BMS abbreviations there. So that looks pretty good. Um, but this last column is sort of blank, which is interesting. So we can take a look at a facet of that. And we can see that basically every single row has a blank column three, uh, but one of them uh, we can just filter out to that. We can see the original point name had two periods uh, at the end there. So essentially what we can do uh, is just concatenate those and fix that up. So what I'm going to do is uh, edit column. I'm going to join the two columns. I'm going to join column 132 and 133. Uh, and just click OK. Now why? Oh, and then I can just remove this one. All right, so now that's looking pretty good. Uh, so now we're in this, the situation where uh, we want to be able to uh, start turning these BMS point abbreviations into something that looks a little bit more like brick. So there's a couple things that we can do here. Uh, one thing that can be helpful is to use this transpose function to figure out sort of how common different kinds of points are um, for each of these keys. So if we go to the transpose function, we can columnize by key value columns. And what we want the key column to be is going to be that label. And we want the point label to go inside the, the, uh, the value. Uh, this is pretty similar to how a pivot table works. We're going to apply that. Sometimes this can take a little bit. We've got about, you know, uh, 5,000 rows here. And we can see it sort of spread out the uh, point type across each of these. And so we can look at for each of the uh, VAVs, sort of what kinds of points we're having. So this VAV has zone air temp, reheat PI, uh, some supply airflow, uh, sensor or set point, temperature set point, uh, some other sort of, um, you know, exhaust uh, CFM sensor, uh, so we can get sort of a sense of the distribution of the kinds of points that are in our building. Um, this I'm not going to be using this view. This is sort of a nice sort of sanity check of, of what's going on. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually go to the, the undo redo tab here and just uh, roll back to the previous version before I did that transformation. So now we're going to be using the next sort of really helpful feature of, of OpenRefine, which is reconciliation. So. What I've done is I've written up a simple little web service that is able to infer a brick type based on some common uh, BMS abbreviations. This is not exhaustive, it's not perfect. Uh, I'll make sure that the code is online somewhere so that everyone can use this. And essentially what, what I can do is go to that column, reconcile, start reconciling, and I can pick that service. Um, right now it's just called the simple reconciliation service. And so you can see that what the service is going to do is it's going to give me some brick point class. I can include some extra metadata from other columns if I want to give that uh, as additional properties into the, uh, the sort of the classification process, uh, which I don't. And so we're going to start reconciling. This is pretty fast. And so you can see what this has given me is essentially a brick class for each of those uh, values in those cells. For some of these it's pretty certain, so something like the zone air temperature sensor, it's pretty solid uh, that that's what it meant. And you can see that you know zone air temp is a pretty good idea, we got that right. Uh, for something like reheat PI, it wasn't quite sure, so you can see it's about 33% sure uh, that that is uh, a point, <laughs> which is probably a, you know, a fair guess, but not necessarily a useful classification. So as that reconciliation service improves and matures, or as we use more advanced techniques, you know, of course we'd get sort of more uh, more useful classification. Uh, so for some of these, uh, you know, we're getting some temperature set points. Actually, you know what, we can just take a look at a facet and see the kinds of things that we got. So um, taking a look at a facet here. Oh, I want to just filter out for matched. Ah, okay. So we can see the kinds of things that we matched are things that say fan. Uh, what did fan match to? Fan matched to fan status. Flow matched to flow set point. Um, probably not right, but we can fix that later. Um, Oc mode uh, got classified to occupied mode status. So 
you know, it's, it's looking pretty good for, for, for most of this. Um, I'll just sort of keep this facet on match so that I'm only going to be classifying uh, the points that have a good match here. Uh, and so now, lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this column to brick class. Um, I'm going to rename this to zone name. And then lastly, because I'd like to have some uh, identifier for the VAV in order to link all of these points to that entity, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new column uh, based on the, the name of the zone. And so this is sort of a general sort of transformation interface where you can do arbitrary transformations on uh, the, the values and cells and columns and rows and all the rest of that. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is just returning VAV plus the value that's in that current column. So I'm sort of inventing an identifier for the VAV. Obviously, you know, if you had access to BACnet addresses or other unique identifiers that make sense for your building, you could just use those instead. Um, in this particular case, the point name doesn't include the name of a VAV, so we're just going to invent one for uh, to, to make our lives easier. So I'm going to click OK there. Oh, make sure to create a column name, VAV name. And you can see now I have that, that column done. Um, I don't need the zone column anymore, so I'm just going to remove that. Oh, that's going to undo my view. OK, so now we're essentially set, uh, and I'm ready to export this CSV file. So I'm just going to use that export function in the top right, um, export to CSV, and then that'll download. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my terminal uh, and we're going to uh, use the Brick Builder tool. So first off, I'm going to move my example CSV file here. Um, I can take a look at that CSV file. I can see I have my header up there uh, and I've got essentially the entire content uh, of what I just downloaded from OpenRefine. So, what I'm going to do, uh, example, I'm going to copy over an existing um, template just to make it a little bit easier to get started and just embrace the rest of that. So what I've got at the top of this template is just a, a, a couple simple mappings between a prefix and a full uh, RDF URI, uh, which is what's going to be going into our model eventually. Uh, and what I'm going to do is take the uh, name, the top, take the, the header of the uh, CSV file. Um, I'm going to pipe it into this tool. I think that's what I want. Yes. And what that tool is going to do is just sort of organize that so I can uh, more easily tell which column number I'm talking about. Okay, so now we're ready to create our template. And what the template's going to do is it's going to uh, basically tell for each row of that CSV file how to create the brick model or how to create uh, a few brick triples. So uh, the uh, easiest way to start for me, I find, is to uh, start naming the types of the things that are in the column. So column three, which is upstream AHU, currently the tool is one, in, uh, is one indexed. Uh, the, the header on the right is zero index, so we have to do that translation. Uh, definitely something we can fix in a future version of the tool. So I'm going to say, uh, so column three, which I'm going to put, um, I'm going to prefix the name of that column, because right now it's something like HU01. I'm going to prefix that with this uh, this namespace so it looks like a, a, a bigger URI. Um, this is going to make it easier to parse later. Um, it's going to make sure that all of our identifiers for the building are grouped into the same namespace. So anytime where we have an entity in our building, we're going to be prefixing it with BLDG uh, uh, in our template. And you'll see what that looks like in the, for the output. So the value in column three um, is going to have an RDF type relationship to the brick AHU class. So that would be sort of instantiating the AHUs from those identifiers. Um, the value in column four is going to be a HVAC zone value in column 5 is a VAV, and the vo value in column 6 um, 
sorry, the value, uh, uh, so what the value in column six is the brick class that we got, uh, but it's not actually the name of the entity. The name of the entity is the point label. So that's column one, and column one's type is given by the brick class in column six. And so that's what that looks like. So now that we've determined the types of each of these, now we're going to say uh, what the relationships are between them. So uh, we know what the relationships are because uh, you know we're familiar with how buildings are put together or familiar with how a particular building is put together. Um, so rather than having to infer what the relationships are, we can just sort of write them down and then uh, apply them to you know our 5,000 rows or whatever. So uh, the relationships here are going to be our VAV, which is column five, is fed by the air handling unit. We could also write this, the air handling unit feeds the, the, the VAV, so either way works. Um, we're also going to say that the VAV is going to be feeding the HVAC zone, which is column four. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to be associating the points with the VAV. So uh, VAV uh, has point, whatever's in column one. Okay, so that's our template. Um, and what we're going to do, uh, so I'm just going to take, um, you know, the top 10 rows of the CSV file just to have a smaller example. Uh, and we're going to apply the brick builder tool, which is make.py. That's going to take an argument, which is the name of the template, in this case, example.txt, and then the name of a CSV file, top10.csv. We're going to execute that. And what's going to do is going to pop out a file uh, output.ttl, which is our uh, turtle file containing the brick model. So you can see in this brick model, we've got um, the two uh, prefixes. We've got a VAV, uh, 260, 3b. Um, it feeds a zone. It's got these points. It's fed by an air handling unit. Um, we can see that air handling unit down on line 43. We can see the types of these points are all applied. Um, some of these still have, um, we need to filter out the, uh, 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 the, the classes that, that didn't quite get translated, so I missed something there, but you get the idea. Um, now what I can do is go ahead and apply that to the full example Sometimes this can take a little bit, uh, but there we go. Um, and now I've got the full brick model um, of all my VAVs, all of the points, all of the air handling units, all of the zones, everything that was contained within that CSV file. And now I can go ahead and load this into my graph database. I can load this into my SQL database, um, whatever sort of is the, uh, uh, you know, however you want to interact with that brick model. All right, that's it.